Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to this evening's uh, update. So we're going to have a look at the midday runs of models this evening. Double weekend forecast, of course, and uh, it's quite a complicated week ahead coming up, both in terms of the detail and then later on towards the end of the week, quite a bit of uncertainty. So have a look at weekend forecast. It's here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and it's above the snow desk. Uh, and there's also a written version you get to from buttons at the top of the page. Essentially, it is going to be uh, quite a chilly week coming up with some cold weather in there as well. Notably, as we're starting off, and tonight we could see temperature going down to minus 14 and minus 15 uh, degrees Celsius in some of these Scottish glens. Very cold night coming up in the far north of the country tonight. But have a look at the weekend forecast, see what you think. This uh, second video is just going to have a look at the midday runs of the models just to sort of pick things up uh, and show what they're, um, uh, say what they're showing uh, as we go into sort of a 7 to 10 day uh, time frame, which is around where we've got all of the uncertainty as to what is going to uh, happen. Just say that tomorrow we've got the uh, start of a return of the uh, Sunday Roundup. We bring the Sunday Roundup back for you tomorrow. I'm going to explain about that at the end of... Uh, weekend forecast, but um, the phone starts ringing and I had to wrap the video up very quickly. So uh, at the end of this video, as long as the phone doesn't ring again, I really have to start unplugging the phone during these recordings. Long as the phone doesn't ring again, I'll talk about the Sunday roundup uh, at the end of this video. Right, so let's get on uh, with the midday uh, update. We're actually going to start off with the e Midnight Run, because that hasn't updated uh, yet. That comes out between 6 and 7 o'clock in the evening UK time. That just gets a bit too late to uh, wait for it, because I, I didn't record the video until after 7 o'clock in the evening, and I wouldn't be able to get it uploaded to YouTube until about 8 o'clock, and it would just be getting too late. So unfortunately, we can never fit the e into these uh, Evening videos, which is a bit of a uh, a bit of a nuisance, but never mind. This is what the ECMWF was showing uh, this morning for the midnight run. So we're starting on Wednesday. Now I've got the high pressure of over Scandinavia. That's what's causing all of the uncertainty. This area of high pressure here wants to take over weather. And it wants to bring us this easy win. In fact, a few days ago, the ECMWF was really going for a proper easterly fetch, long fetch easterly from Russia. Uh, it was really going for it. And then all of a sudden, it dropped it. Dropped that idea around two days ago. Nevertheless, the ridge is still there over Scandinavia. And it's causing all sorts of complications in the model output. So we've got these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic. They're trying to bring these mild westerly winds in. Uh, and then the high pressure of Scandinavia is trying to bring us an easily. That's essentially what's causing all of the confusion for the latter stages of the coming week. So this is how the East Andrew F uh, Midnight Run seeing things on Wednesday. Bringing this weather system in from off the Atlantic, probably with some cloud and rain, and maybe something a bit wintry up in the north as well. That low pressure looks like it's doing a bit of a stall, actually, because there it is across the northern parts of France as we go through into midnight on Thursday. So what's happened there is that the front has come across the country, and it's sort of stalled, and it's starting to slip away. And that's happening because of this blocking feature up here. There's not particularly uh, cold air, though, associated uh, with this low pressure. So, yes, there might be something a bit wintry happening for northern parts of the country Wednesday into Thursday. But I think for the south, it's most likely just to be uh, cold rain. Then beyond that, we have a go at building up another ridge as we go through into the end of the week and the start of the weekend. The heights are pushing back up to the northeast again. So we've still got this ridge up over Scandinavia. Now, it's actually quite a mild flow that we're bringing up here by Saturday. Day. The wind is up from the south and the southwest. Uh, so reasonable mild, although in the far southeast it might still be a little bit cooler there. Doesn't take long though before these areas of low pressure start to move in off the Atlantic. So the extended range of the East Central Earth actually turns very unsettled and eventually really quite cold. This is how the day 10 chart finishes uh, Tuesday 16th of January. We're bringing in a strong west to north westerly wind. And the air is coming out of Greenland as well. You've only eyes bars back. The air is coming from up there. Quite a cold west north westerly flow coming in there. Probably enough to bring significant snow to northern and western parts of the country. So although we don't get the easterly, 
we may get something cold by around the middle of January from, uh, and perhaps a little bit unusually, from the West and the Northwest. So I'm going to show you a very bizarre um, GFS Ensemble member in a moment that brings in some extraordinarily cold air from the West. I, it won't come up, but I thought I'd include it ready for uh, posterity, because um, it's very unusual to see what this uh, GFS Assault member is doing. That'll be coming up at the end of the video. Um, just have a look at the UK Met Office. Now, this is the midday run of the UK Met Office. All the other models that you see in this video will be the midday run. So this is the latest from the UK Met uh, model. Again, we've got high pressure up over Scandinavia there on Wednesday with this weather front coming in from off the Atlantic. And as it comes with gates is blocked, it is stalling. Unfortunately, if you want snow, we haven't got particularly cold air across the country, so it's mostly rain, but might do something a bit wintry in northern parts of the country. As you go through to the end of the week, we find that, again, we've still got a very strong area of high pressure there over Scandinavia. Its central pressure is 1,040 millibars, uh, but it's a really uh, sort of well-defined proper area of high pressure over Scandinavia. Uh, the only problem is that the Atlantic is really active. So again, we've got a strong sort of battle going on here. We're in a battleground UK type situation, probably bringing heavy rain in off the Atlantic. And for the west, reasonably mild, but in the east, close to this blocking feature over Scandinavia, uh, probably quite cold, actually, for eastern parts of the country at the end of week. Where about go beyond that? I'm not sure, because um, whether this low pressure in the Atlantic will break this high pressure down as quickly as the Central for example, is showing and send us into that cold uh, sort of west-northwesterly by day 10. Whether that would happen, I'm not entirely uh, sure, actually. It may be, but with this sort of scenario, high pressure over Scandinavia would actually hold on for quite a while. Uh, this is for GM, the Canadian model. So, again, we've got this battle going on on Wednesday. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia. We've got low pressure in the Atlantic. Low pressure is uh, moving the wind in that way. The high pressure wants to move the wind in from that way. And we've got a weather front in that sort of position. Uh, we move through into Thursday. And, again, you see a stall of that low pressure and its weather front has taken place. The front is in that sort of uh, position midnight, uh, I should say midday, on Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Again, the problem if you want snow is that we haven't got particularly cold air. So despite the fact that the weather front is stalling through the country and developing an area of low pressure along it, uh, it's probably not going to be cold enough to bring snow, except perhaps over Scotland, uh, maybe the Pennines, Welsh Mountains, those sorts of areas. Uh, by Friday, we get a milder push of winds from the southwest. Uh, that ridge doesn't look as strong, you'll notice, or as well defined over Scandinavia as the UK Met Office model is shown for Friday. So even now, we've got disagreements about for the end of the week about this area of high pressure over uh, Scandinavia. Uh, we go through into uh, next weekend, turning increasingly unsettled. This is a very deep area of low pressure that we've got here in the northern part of the Atlantic. So that's bringing lots of wet and windy weather in next weekend across the country. And again, you'll notice behind uh, the sort of weather front there, and behind that, the air is originating from Greenland. So we bring down quite a lot of cold air into the uh, northern Atlantic. Uh, Atlantic by the end of next weekend. And then we go up to day 10, which is Tuesday the 16th of January. And you'll see what's happening. This area of low pressure is uh, diving south. I assume it's a little bit of a polar vortex um, in with this area of low pressure, albeit massively modified by the Atlantic. But there is quite a lot of cold air that's uh, feeding into this area of low pressure. So by this point, would well, depend on the exact parameters of the atmosphere, but by this point, wouldn't be that surprised if uh, we have some snow developing across, particularly northern parts of the country, by uh, day 10. Notice heights rising up here to our north and also strengthening again over Scandinavia. If we could run on another day, you would probably find this low pressure down here somewhere and we'd probably be pulling in the wind from a northeast direction. So by day 10, the GM looks like it's getting quite cold. And finally, the GFS. So uh, this is midday run of the GFS uh, starting again on Wednesday. 
that low pressure is coming up against the ridge. High pressure is there. The weather front's through there. It's a little bit further in across the country, actually, at uh, midday on Wednesday than the other models. But still, the suggestion that a bit of a stall is taking place, albeit maybe more to the east of the country. So it does get that weather front across us a little bit quicker compared to those other models. But remember, in any case, we're only talking about cold rain, really, away from Scotland and maybe the highest ground north in England. By Friday, we get this milder push of winds from the southwest. So fairly good agreement on that, other than with the UK Met Office model. Looks like we have quite a mild day on Friday with those southwesterly winds. Uh, and then these areas, areas of low pressure start to move in from off the Atlantic next weekend. We've been relatively cool air as well. Notice heights are still quite high here across Scandinavia and back into western parts of Russia. Um, and that's what's causing, or one of the things that's causing, these low pressures to be going in that sort of direction. I'll run you up to day 10, and we find this area of low pressure deepens out to our west. Again, quite a lot of cold air is feeding into that area of low pressure, albeit on this particular run of the GFS up to day 10, we keep the winds from the west southwesterly. But it is quite a cold west southwesterly that's going on around that low pressure, a little bit beyond day 10. And uh, you see what happens. That low pressure slips to our south. If we could have run on with the GEM beyond day 10, it would probably have shown this sort of scenario as well. So um, by the time we get through to Thursday, the 18th of January, for example, this low pressure is centering across uh, central parts of Europe. Heights rising through the Atlantic and to our north. And so that's turning the winds into the northeast. There will definitely be some snow potential in with that across many parts of the country through the middle part of uh, January and we have this proper northeasterly wind going on uh, with a lot of cold air uh, waiting to our north to be pulled down on those uh, northeasterly. So the suggestion is there that even if we don't get the east, it doesn't look like we are going to get anything from the east really. Even if we don't get the east, though, the suggestion is there that by day 10 we could be pulling in quite a cold, uh, quite a cold sort of west and then eventually northerly or northeasterly. Wouldn't totally rule out the EC just yet, though. Uh, this is ensemble member number 12. I thought I'd just show you what this one is doing. This is starting on Wednesday. Uh, notice the area of high pressure is in there over uh, Scandinavia. I'll just run you through, show you what it does. And uh, very different to all those other charts that we've just seen, except maybe the uh, UK Met Office. Ensemble member number 12 has the high pressure dominating from Scandinavia at the end of the week and into next weekend. So that high pressure is centred over Scandinavia and the winds there coming in from a cold easterly direction as early as the end of the week and next weekend uh, as well. And then that easterly continues for a while into the middle part of the month before the Scandinavian high eventually gives way. And then we go off and running into a cold uh, sort of westerly and quite stormy flow as well. So just go back to that. Uh, so we do see a 1,040 millibar area of high pressure there on Friday uh, with easterly winds, with ensemble member number 12. So we can't entirely, and the UK Met Office model is fairly close to that as well, we can't entirely give up on this easterly possibility just yet, but um, it looks like a fairly lowish risk that we are going to get a proper easterly win. Uh, and then this is on some member number 17. I just want to include this for posterity, uh, really. So look what this one uh, does. This has been pointed out by uh, Tom on uh, in the comment section at Gazweb. So thanks, Tom, for pointing this one out. On some member number 17 ramps up, it doesn't get easily, but it ramps up uh, the Atlantic, here we go, uh, on Monday the 15th, and uh, it turns very stormy, uh, so we've got severe gales coming through here, very stormy weather as well with these westerly winds. Uh, doesn't look all that shocking perhaps from that view, but if I show you the upper air temperatures that uh, we're getting at this point, uh, so uh, we're talking about the 15th of January. Look at this. We see the minus 
uh, 10 and even the minus 15 isotherm coming in across the UK and it's coming in on a, a flat westerly flow that is highly unusual and it happens because we have this extensive area of uh, cold upper air temperatures got this extensive area of cold upper air temperatures to the south of Greenland and coming out of uh, Newfoundland and they just managed to get themselves across the Atlantic rather bizarrely so Ireland there is being hit by minus 15 isotherm from the west which is extraordinary indeed and then uh, the whole of the UK finds itself with upper air temperatures of between minus 10 and minus 15 uh, there on uh, Monday the 15th of January. That would be bringing blizzards across the country. You've got gale force, westerly winds with a minus 10 isotherm, loads of showers and longer spells of precipitation being packed in and all of that would be snow. Very severe, very bizarre, very unusual what happens there with ensemble member number uh I'll talk about number 17 don't worry if that is not going to come off you're not going to get the 15 celsius ice for famous last words but you're uh, really not going to get the 15 celsius ice for uh, minus 15 celsius ice, ice for, i should say across the whole of the atlantic ocean from canada and into the uk like that but it is the idea that we may get quite a cold west northwesterly flow there Perhaps unusually cold west northwesterly flow, even if it isn't as cold as this, uh, unusually cold west to northwesterly flow sometime around the middle of uh, January, and that could well bring, particularly for northern and western parts of the country, quite significant snow. Finally, I'll just show you the upper air, the um, stratospheric temperature forecast from the GFS model for uh, the North Pole. Again, we are seeing signs of a sudden stratospheric warming taking place. This is what it's showing on the 22nd of January as far as we can go. Big warming again uh, showing up on tonight's midday run of the GFS in terms of the temperature at 10 HPA over Siberia. We could run on another couple of days. You will find those um, bright colours pushing into the North Pole. So again, there is definitely the suggestion of a stratospheric warming, sun stratospheric warming, I should say, taking place in the final week to 10 days of January with the GFS. And we'll talk more about that in the Sunday round. And so I will tell you about Sunday Roundup. We are going to bring back Gaz over his Sunday Roundup for you tomorrow. So it's a bit of an, always a bit of an eclectic sort of mishmash of stuff. We're going to have a look at uh, what's happening in terms of the stratosphere, of course. We'll also have a look at well, next week to 10 days. But other things will be in there as well, such as um, sea surface temperature anomalies. I'll bring you up to date with uh, what's happening with the quasi biennial oscillation. Uh, there'll be other things as well that I can't think of off the top of my head, but I'll try and throw everything that I can into that. Oh, solar activity, of course. We'll have a solar tracker updated uh, for you in the Sunday Roundup as well. So it'll be an ex extended video for you tomorrow, uh, and uh, I hope that you'll come back for that then. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.